remember that God the Father is a judge. So let's say you commit a horrible crime, okay? And you go before the judge. And let's say you killed five people. And the judge is, you know, the jury already found you guilty. The judge now has to sentence you. And he's sentencing you to life. And not to death, I should say. He's sentencing you to death. But when you leave the courtroom, are you gonna go right into the execution chair? No. You're going to serve a certain portion of time and then you're going to go into the electric chair. When God is giving Adam a death sentence, he places him on the earth for his death sentence. And he gives him a certain amount of days for his life and for mankind and their life. Okay? Now we're subject to death, to hell. The word hell means death. And so he was casted out of Eden and sent to the earth for his death punishment. And for those who do not live according to the laws of God, according to his holy word, there is a second death coming for you. But that is another time. We're going to study that another time. So, you should understand that the spirit of God is wisdom and wisdom is the tree of life that was removed from Adam and Eve, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus brings salvation to us by his sacrifice, but also by bringing the second, the, uh, the other comforter. I will not leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you another comforter and they are going to remind you of all the things that I have told you. Okay. I will not leave you comfortless. Okay. Who is the comforter? It is our mother. Okay. So to understand the Bible, you must pay close attention to details. These descriptions are usually a way for you to connect the dots. Even someone who is a good reader will have trouble doing this with the Bible. I believe the reason is because we have preconceived ideas of what the Bible says, that we skip over important details that would lead us to a greater truth. Let's continue. Now, this is all I have so far for these slides. But I think that this is enough food for you guys to chew on for right now. I really ask of anyone who is really questioning this because this is quite different from what you've been taught. And I understand that. Um, I'm going to give you a little background about myself. I grew up Catholic. Um, when I was a small child, I always had the Tanakh and the Torah in my heart and in my mind. I had the words and the laws of God in my heart and in my mind. And a lot of the things that I was being taught in the Catholic Church, even at a very young age, I questioned it. It didn't make sense to me. It was very contradicting to what the Bible said. It was contradicting what I knew in my heart. And, but over time, I just kind of accepted it. And God did not withdraw his love from me because I was Catholic. In fact, God was always in my life. No matter how bad I was in my life, 
he might have turned his eyes away from me, but he was still very much um, a part of my everyday life. Okay. But um, it took a lot for me to leave the Catholic Church. It took a lot for me as an adult, especially believing that the Catholic Church was a good place for me to be at with my um, relationship with God, that it was a good tool for me. And I think at the time it was, but now I'm growing and I'm growing into greater truths. God is raising me to be a, uh, something else in his kingdom. God is raising me to, to do more work for him. I was at a point where I was really frustrated and I didn't know what to do with my beliefs because I have fallen from God, not because of the Catholic Church, but my own doing, <clears throat> by what I was doing wrong. The Catholic Church would have never approved of my behavior. No church, no organization ever would say what I was doing was okay. And so when I turned back to God, I didn't want to do anything wrong again. I wanted to be 100% in his grace. And I wanted to make sure that where I was at was exactly where he wanted me to be at because oh. I've made so many mistakes in my past. I could not afford to make any more mistakes. That was my mentality. And so I kept asking God, are you sure I should be here? Should I be here? Should I be here? And he kept giving me, no, you shouldn't be here. But then that left me with, okay, so where should I be then? And I'm going to these different churches and I'm thinking of these different places and it's just a, a dead end. Because now I'm reading the Bible. Now I'm praying religiously. I'm developing a relationship with God I've never had in my entire life, although I've always known him and I've always had a deep connection with him. The deepness of my connection with him just grew even more than I could imagine. And so now I'm at a point where, okay, I have to worship you. I have to, where am I supposed to go to worship you? What building am I supposed to be at? What group of people am I supposed to be among to worship you properly? And I know God is in heaven just laughing at me like, you're doing it right now, fool. <laughs> Right now you're doing it right here in your house with your family and your friends and those who surround you, you're doing it. And it was like a light bulb just like went off. Like, are you serious? So you mean I don't have to be like, you know, like Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, oompa, doompa, doompa de do, <laughs> getting up and down and on my knees and everything else like I do at church? You mean I can be in the comfort of my own home and praise and worship you right here and learn your holy word right in my own home and get to know you on the deepest level ever possible right here? I don't have to get in my car. I don't have to put on my Sunday clothes and my Sunday shoes and my Sunday hat. And I don't have to do all this hula that I was always taught. You mean I can come to you just the way I am right here in my home and I can read the Bible and I can share with my family, my friends, the things that me and you talk about in secret in my secret closet. Like, wow, I pray that God gives to you more than he's ever even given to me. And I can assure you what he's given to me is a lot. And I hope and I pray that God sends his spirit to you so that you may know this beautiful person, this beautiful woman who has been so neglected. 